We hear uh, stories about at least 100,000 dead from the Syrian civil war and seven uh, and the seven million who have lost or fled their homes. That's one third of the Syrian uh, uh, Syrian population. For most of us, these are just nameless statistics. I-24 News correspondent our Danny Swibel has just returned from the Syrian Jordanian border, where he met one such statistic: a member of the Free Syrian Rebel Army. Here's his story. There is nobody with us, just Allah. We didn't attack the Assad regime. We were just defending ourselves. The regime was attacking us, and we didn't know how to defend ourselves. These Kalashnikov guns that we used are not strong enough to fight the regime. The regime has serious weapons like airplanes and tanks. I've seen throughout the entire world that the world and the U.S. is trying to help the Syrians in this crisis. I approve of them trying to protect civilians in Syria from chemical weapons that have killed thousands of people. At the beginning, people were against the dictatorial regime. We expected that after several months we would have completed our revolution. But Russia, Iran, Hezbollah and Iraq helped them to survive by sending weapons and soldiers. Free Syrian Army rebel General Idris said that we approve of U.S. involvement to destroy Bashar al-Assad and make him vanish. If the most powerful countries in the world are not involved in this crisis, not the Arabic countries, then the, the killing of thousands of more people will surely continue. They even kept firing on our homes and our towns on Ramadan for seven days. The army is getting help from the Iranians and Hezbollah soldiers who were uh, the ones who killed my brother. Because of the killing, I was forced to use weapons to protect me and my family my children and my country. And before we continue, uh, this just broke. Syrian President Bashar al-Assad is uh, quoted tonight in the French newspaper Le Figaro saying that the allegations against his regime regarding uh, using chemical weapon against civilians are inconceivable. He warned France that participation in an American military attack will change the country into an enemy of Syria. will change the country into an enemy of Syria. This is the latest news that we have from the Syrian regime. And with me in the studio is our Danny Swaibel. Thank you very much, our I-24 News correspondent. Thank you very much. First of all, good to have you back. Good to be here, Lisa. Thank you. So we're talking about statistics, and you met the statistics. And what you met, what you see from there, is nothing like you see it from here. Definitely not. Listen, once you actually see these people, you see their injuries, you see that they have legs that aren't working anymore. Um, they don't have their arms, they don't have their legs. It was very intense to see this in person. Uh, one of the people that we spoke to, uh, he happened to be a member of the Free Syrian Rebel Army, and he was just a protester once upon a time in the town of Dara. And he thought that perhaps the protests would be just like in Cairo two years ago. They would go to the streets and they would overthrow their regime. It never happened. His brother was stabbed brutally right in front of him and bled to death in his arms. And to hear these stories and to hear him express the, the, the pain, the agony of hearing 120 people massacred right in front of him, women, children, um, even an old man. Once he broke into the story about the old man, how he died, he couldn't even keep it together. To hear that, to hear his voice crack, it took it to a different level, Lucy. You've been uh, covering the whole Syrian uh, story for the last uh, few weeks for us. Uh, how did you feel when you saw everything on the field? It definitely made it obviously a lot more real. Um, it definitely made me think just whatever the U.S. decides to do or the West, um, people are waiting. People are waiting for answers. Uh, a lot of the refugees I spoke to saying that who cares about the Syrian people? You know, you have the U.S., the European leaders. One of the persons I spoke to said, you know, they're liars. They are politicians who just talk and they watch. They don't do anything. And then you have the Chinese, the Russians, the Iranians, Hezbollah. They are the enemies of the Syrian people. In the meantime, we're just here suffering, and we can never go back to our homes while this is happening. It could be decades. What is the Jordan point of view on the situation? Because it's getting all the refugees from Syria? To tell you the truth, uh, a lot of the Jordanians are, Jordanians are very supportive of the Syrian people coming in. 
I did hear some cynical things about some Jordanian people profiting from you know, the fact that Syrian people are flowing across the border. Uh, I stayed in a neighborhood where actually a lot of Syrian refugees stay. They're not, they don't have room in the camp, so they just stay in these neighborhoods. They get overcharged, and uh, they're just trying to make ends meet. A lot of the women who were there we spoke to didn't have husbands anymore, but they had still their kids running around who didn't know where the next meal was going to be. So to meet these people, to talk with them, it was very a poignant and very touching thing. The main conclusion that you got from your three-day visit? That something needs to happen, something needs to happen big. This is what the world has been waiting for, but it cannot continue like this. Um, people think they'll never be able to go back unless something changes. It could be decades before they ever get to go back to their homes, if ever. Something should be done. I think this is the key sentence. Uh, yeah. Our Danny Swebel, good to have you back. Thanks. Thank you very much for this.